know, more people are showing up in the emergency room uh, uh, complaining of intestinal problems, and it turns out they have E. coli infections. Um, any of the big grocery stores were disallowed from, from giving out plastic uh, grocery bags. Um, they could give out uh, reusable bags or sell reusable bags. They could uh, give out recyclable uh, paper bags or they could give out um, compostable plastic bags. But those are both pretty expensive options. So most of the grocery stores moved to, to asking people to use their own reusable bags. These, um, these bag bans have been gaining momentum and, and you, know, you have Los Angeles passing, you have Hawaii uh, doing the entire state, you have Washington DC in, in, implementing a tax. There have been some science folks who have, who have done some, some studies where, for example, they, they'll intercept people who are going into a grocery store who have reusable bags and they'll say, you know, can we check your bag? And um, what they find is, is that more than half of the bags have some coliform bacteria in them like, like E. coli. What I've done is I've looked at, um, is there any ultimate effect of this, right? So when these bag bans go into effect, do we see people getting sort of sick and showing up in the emergency room, or do we actually see people dying? So the San Francisco one is the, is the band that we can look at in most detail, and there uh, we were finding that, that deaths, for example, from um, foodborne illness or intestinal infections uh, goes up by anywhere between 50% and 100%, so a doubling in, 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 some, in some instances. Uh, you know, there are people who claim that these bans are going to lead to reduced plastic bag use, which is going to lead to fewer bags in the, in the water, um, which is going to lead to fewer turtles and birds and things like that dying. And, you know, how do you do these trade-offs? The most conservative estimate is you've got another five or six people dying. You know, how do we, how do we put a value on that in regulatory uh, analyses? We do do that, right? We usually sort of assume, or the EPA assumes, that each person's life is worth about $8 million. And so if we, we do that multiplication, you know, that's, that's a big loss. These are hard comparisons to make, but by one back-of-the-envelope calculation, um, the San Francisco bag ban only uh, proves to be beneficial if you're willing to say each bird that's saved, for example, is worth $70,000. Eventually, you're going to have to come down to a, to a normative decision. I'm an economist, not a philosopher, right? So I don't do those comparisons. But you're really, your trade-off is uh, the extra people who die and get sick and all the costs associated with that with potentially saving uh, some of this wildlife. And up until now, the entire discussion has been on environmental benefits, and no one's really talked about um, the costs, not even the costs of sort of the convenience of plastic, you know, the loss of convenience of plastic bags, but certainly not not sort of health health costs. And so, you know, in some ways, you know, particularly given this trend, um, I think we need sort of a much broader discussion of these things.